Right, so we're going to be talking about a uh, triangle of forces here, forces and equilibrium. You've done some forces and stuff before. Now you can read through this. I'm not going to tell you the definition of a force. Just read that, read that. We're going to be talking about things where the forces um, cancel each other out. That is, where an object stays stationary because the forces are all cancelling each other out. It's not in motion. All right. So forces are vectors, uh, you're pushing with a certain amount of force or gravity is pulling with a certain amount of force and in a certain direction. I might be pushing across, gravity might be pulling down. So a force is a vector, magnitude and direction. That's all we need to do there. Um, weight, so the unit of force we're gonna talk about is kilogram weight. So if an object has a mass of one kilogram, then the force due to gravity acting on the object is one kilogram weight. Now there's a note here, um, but just to uh, talk about it, usually the standard force, uh, the standard unit of force is a newton, and we can say that the newtons are equal to the mass of an object times gravity. All right, so important little formula there if you need to convert from uh, newtons to kilograms or vice versa. We talked about forces being uh, in equilibrium. Uh, in order for so a box on the ground to not just fall through the earth, there needs to be a resisting force. So you get a force downwards, but then you also get an equal and opposite force called the normal force. Now, uh, with the with the Earth with a flat plane, it's pretty pretty straightforward. With the weight down, the normal force up. If you're dealing with an inclined plane, which we've done in the past, then you're going to get the weight down and the normal force perpendicular to the ground. A nice little right angle there between the normal force and the ground. Okay. So there's also this thing called a tension force. We haven't done a lot of this in the past, so this is sort of new to us. Um, I want you to look at this diagram here and understand that it's wrong. I, I think it's incomplete. Um, this is my ceiling here. And there's a rope, which I'll do in blue, from the ceiling to the object connected. And, uh, okay, so let's, let's run through it all. There's an object. Gravity is acting on the object, so we get a, a vector, a weight vector there, right? Now, we also get an equal and opposite tension in the rope here. Now, what's going on with this bit? Now, so this tension is sort of pulling up on the object, but then we also get another tension here acting down from the ceiling. But then if we didn't have something counteracting that force acting downwards on the ceiling, then the ceiling would collapse. So there's actually another force, like a, a, a counteracting force, up, pulling up on the ceiling, sort of like your normal contact force, but you've got a force down from the ceiling, and then you need an opposite force holding the ceiling up, otherwise the ceiling's going to collapse. So uh, that... Um, diagram was from your textbook. Just remember that there's tension down from the ceiling, there's tension up from the object, there's weight down from the object, but there's also tension up from the ceiling, otherwise the ceiling falls down. Okay, that brings us to the triangle of forces, which we have covered before. Uh, if three forces are acting on a point in equilibrium, then they can be represented by three vectors forming a triangle. So if you imagine... Uh, Here's an object being held up by two strings connected to the ceiling. Uh, the weight is pulling, the, the gravity is pulling the object down. The strings are holding the object up. Now we can reorient those. So F3 is here. F1 is here. F2 is here. And we can orient them into a triangle. Um, as long as that's in equilibrium. If that object was 
falling down, obviously, it doesn't work anymore. That that equilibrium doesn't doesn't hold. Now, if three vectors are in a triangle, then we can say that vector one plus vector two plus vector three equals zero, or force one plus force two plus force three equals zero. And that's sort of the key to being able to do this. Now, you've had lots of practice now using the sine and the cosine rule. And essentially, whenever you find yourself in like a um, three, uh, like a sorry, triangle of forces type problem, that's how you're going to solve it using some sort of sine or cosine rule. All right, so here's exactly the sort of question I was talking about. A particle of mass eight kilograms is uh, suspended by two strings attached to two points in the same horizontal plane, and we've told the angles there, uh, thirty and forty. Find the tension in each string. So we're looking for sort of the magnitude of those vectors. So let's let's run through it. We'll take those three vectors and reorient them into a triangle. Um, now we need to sort of think about how that triangle looks a little bit. That's that one there. This vector gets moved to there. Now you need to do a little bit of like. Um, geometry here if that's a 40 degree angle that's a 40 degree angle that's a 90 degree angle that's a 50 degree angle so you do need to think a little bit there are other ways to do that so like that's a 40 degree angle where I construct something perpendicular to the ceiling if that's 40 degrees then that's 50 degrees that's the same thing that I've done there. But you have to reason out what that angle is. You can't just pick up 30 and 40 and hope that they fit in the triangle. That's not how that's going to work. Um, now, similarly, if you can see that this is... Uh, so the vector I just talked about, do it the right color, that blue one there. Oh, dear. So that was the vector I just talked about, that blue one there. And then we've got this vector here, the green one. Now, you can see that's 30 degrees. So it's gonna be pretty easy to reason out to that 60 degrees. Now, if that's 50 and that's 60, that has to be 70 because that's gonna add up to 180. So what do I have? I have uh, a length and I have three angles. Now with that, oh dear, with that length and three angles, I can use the sine rule to find whatever I wanna find here. So in this case, We've, that, there's our sort of full sine rule. I can use my sine rule to find the length, the magnitude of vector one. I can use it to find the magnitude of vector two. So these questions can get all sorts of funky. Uh, this is an interesting one. A particle of mass 15 kilograms is suspended vertically from a point P by a string. So I've got a wall here, this is a wall. And from somewhere towards the top of the wall, from a point P, there's a string uh, and the object is there. Somebody comes along and pulls a second string or just grabs the object and just pulls on the object, whatever it is, um, so that that string is making a 30 degree angle with that. Uh, find the value of F and the tension in the string. So how much um, force is going through that, so it's not a string, it's it's just a person put applying a force and um, find the angle there. So again, those three triangles, these three, because that object is in equilibrium, we can redraw them as, um, as a triangle. So uh, down, down, across, across, angle, angle. And then we can get this nice little right angle in here. So we don't really have to work too hard at this at all uh, because we can use like Sokotoa to find whatever it is that we want to find. So um, if we want to find the force being applied sideways, then we can just do like a, a tan ratio. Tan of this angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, F over 15. 15, 10, 30, that's gonna be five root three. You should be comfortable being able to do that without a calculator, that one. 
Uh, and then the next bit is to find that one, which is just like a, a cos 30. Cos 30 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, you should be able to do that with our calculator. So that's, a, that's another triangle of forces question. So I'm going to pull up stumps there. It's tempting to move on uh, because inclined planes are just another triangle of forces style question. But we're going to save that for another video. For now, if an object is an equilibrium, it's a triangle of, and there's three forces acting upon it. It's a triangle of forces question. Draw a triangle, sine, cosine rule, Sokotoa, get it done.